there are also slightly more controversial decisions in the honours. Um, I strongly suspect that Labour Twitter is going to spend the day tearing itself to pieces <laughs> over whether Tony Blair should have got a knighthood. Um, but then that's just another day on Labour Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you make of that, Ali? Uh, what? Sir Tony Blair, personally picked by the Queen. Well, look, uh, when Tony Blair uh, came in in 1997, he did win a landslide majority. He was there uh, for 10 years. He did do a lot to transform this country, uh, even whether you support him or not. And I was not a supporter of Tony Blair, but he did have a huge impact on the country. And I think it's right in a way that a prime minister of that stature should be recognised in the honour system. However, unfortunately for Tony Blair, uh, his epitaph will always, for me, be Iraq. Uh, and that uh, strange prospectus that we sort of went to war on, which was later then found to be completely and utterly, uh, if not misleading, I mean, he was cleared from various uh, different uh, investigations into it. But still in the public's mind, we were just wondering what happened to the, the dossier in 45 minutes until we we're under attack. So I think you've got to look at it in the round. I do think since leaving office, Tony Blair has sort of established himself as a kind of a U.S. presidential uh, approach to a former prime minister. He's um, tireless, indefatigable. He runs his own think tank. He's set up his own faith foundation. So he does have something to contribute to the public debate, to be fair to him. Uh, he's a bit of an egomaniac, but a lot of politicians <laughs> are. So uh, I, I, I take a sort of a, a balanced view of Tony Blair. He's an extremely talented uh, individual that had a big impact on public life. I think it's probably... Uh, reasonable that he should get an honour. I just think his epitaph will be Iraq. But the good thing is, um, and Emma said that, you know, a number of people have been recognised. I think some of the nice things is that uh, some some youngsters, 11 and 12, have been recognised yeah. for raising funds for their school and also for a local hospice. Uh, again, you've got uh, Olympic uh, greats being recognised, Jason, Laura Kenny, uh, 007, I think we can all, we can all, uh, Daniel Craig, we can all sort of, uh, uh, accept that one. That's a, that's a reasonable. I think he's given good service to the country by making us all smile, uh, during the films. And I think the honor system, I always have a bit of a strange one about the honor system because it's a uniquely British quirk, really. I mean, yeah. the French have got the Legion d'honneur, I suppose, but it's quite, it's quite unique. At least these people are not being ennobled and making our laws in the House of Lords. That's something. So I think it's uh, it's nice to recognise people. I also think that the um, the key figures uh, who have been leading the charge on COVID, so Chris Whitty, Jonathan Van Tam, they've been recognised. Uh, Jenny Harris, to a lesser extent. I mean, the Telegraph is quite is quite damning on that Dame Hood for uh, head of chaos hit te chaos hit testing system. So there's a, there's a mixed bag. It's a mixed bag, but uh, I think overall it's something that is uniquely British. And also one other final thing is Camilla. Has been recognised by the Queen as well with the highest honour well, that think she, she could be by now. <laughs> well, the, the thing is with Camilla, she's she's done her job. I think with a great decency. Uh, she's she's um, very stoical. She's always with uh, uh, Prince Charles by his side. And at some stage, he will become king. The Queen is becoming more frail. Next year, 70 years. Long may she reign. But she also recognises that she has to give up more uh, of the responsibilities. And I think she's recognising she's quite, for the quite, un yeah. quite uncontroversial, wouldn't you say, Emma? Uh, I mean, that's a good thing. That, that sounds like <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, you know, bring them down. Um, but uh, I just, uh, in terms of, you know, if they're going to have this rather silly system um, from the Queen on down, then you either go all in and take it seriously, in which case you've got to recognise the wife of the future king, mm. uh, or you don't. Um, and they undermine their own case if if they sort of start running around worrying about whether Camilla's popular or not, because being popular has absolutely nothing to do with whether you get to be monarch or not. Yeah. Um, what do you make of... You were saying that Labour's going to tear itself apart for the rest of the day over <laughs> Sir Tony. What's your feelings on the matter? Awarded to hit, uh, him for significant public service. Yeah, and, and that's fair. He did give significant public service. He was Prime Minister for, you know, um, a long time... He turned around investment in public services. Um, the Labour government, um, and I say this as a Labour supporter, um, was a mixed bag at times. I didn't feel they always went far enough. I didn't feel that they embedded um, many of their changes well enough so that they could be too easily overturned um, during the austerity decade. Um, but 
They did bring in things that have lasted, like the minimum wage. Um, they turned education around, particularly in the major cities. Um, and all in all, I think if you're going to have um, prime ministers who are so young now, mm -hmm. I mean, this is part of the, the conversation that we haven't really had. Mm. Um, most prime ministers will have a post-prime ministerial life of you know, 40, 50 years now, mm. uh, whereas that just wasn't the case when our prime ministers, it was going to be the last job they ever did. So I think there are always going to be difficulties and controversies after leaving office younger. Um, Ali talks about his uh, philanthropic work, which is great, mm -hmm. but he's also fairly well known as making quite a lot of money from not necessarily the, the most salubrious of sources. Um, so I do think Tony Blair, mixed bag, but if you're going to have a rule that ex-prime ministers mm -hmm. get recognised, have a rule that ex-prime ministers get recognised.